Hey guys, here's Heiko. Welcome back to the channel. Um, you see a watch in front of you and you might be wondering, what is he doing now? Now we are working on so many random things and do reviews in the middle of it and uh, motorcycles, lawnmowers and camera equipment. So I guess I have a little bit of an identity crisis on my channel. Are we a garage channel or are we a desktop channel? Anyways, um, I've been watching, I've been consuming a lot of uh, watch repair content on YouTube and I'm really interested in that topic. Um, you know, I like to tinker and I like to work on mechanical things like cars, motorcycles, and usually I, I seek out the vintage versions of everything. That's why I have a 1974 uh, BMW motorcycle and a 1977 VW bus that I haven't touched in a long while. Um, I like mechanical stuff. That's why I work on simple things. And watches are very mechanical, most of them at least. And um, it's a really attractive hobby. It, it takes a little bit of some patience. Um, there's lots of uh, tinkering potential on watches. Um, it can be relatively expensive, at least to get started, to buy all the tools and uh, supplies, oils and finger cuts and whatever you need to um, do a good job in restoring or repairing an old vintage uh, watch. But even vint vintage watches are relatively affordable as long as you don't want to buy a Rolex or an Omega or a Hoya or you name it. There are some brand names out there that are definitely out of reach for me. Um, but until I have my watchmaker set up completed with all the tools and supplies that I need, uh, why don't we start with a couple uh, simpler jobs and get all the watches running that I already own and um, take you along for the ride. So here in front of me is my first victim. It's been sitting in my watch collection box for a while. It's a uh, Dugena brand watch, which I bought in 2001 right out of um, military flight training in the German army. I was, was, was uh, just transferred to my first unit, a helicopter regiment in Celle, northern Germany. And you're still excited. You just got your wings. You got done with your tactical flight training in a uh, helicopter model. And uh, you, you know, you're like full of energy and you want to get a watch. You know, every pilot has a cool watch. The German military actually provides a watch for uh, their pilots. So I had a, uh, a military pilot watch, which, which was actually a really old Hoya watch, hand wind. I wish I w would have been allowed to keep it. Uh, really big timepiece. It's a chunk on your arm. It's heavy. Uh, but, you know, I would kind of get tired of the hand winding all the time and it was really beat up and scratched up. I guess a hundred other pilots had worn this before. So I ended up buying myself a chronograph, typical uh, pilot outfit, uh, needs to look cool, needs to be rather big on your wrist so you have a nice chunky timepiece. Um, and so I bought this one. Uh, price level, I couldn't even tell you, maybe 200 German marks. I think 2001, that must have been right before the euro started. When did, when did the euro start? Yeah, I'm sitting in front of a computer. So let me Google this real quick. Euro currency started in... The earliest date was in Germany where the mark officially ceased to be legal tender on 31st December 2001. Yeah, so I bought it in 2001, I'm pretty sure, uh, before the euro, euro became the currency over there. So I bought it in German marks. It might have been a little over 200 marks, German marks, but it doesn't matter anymore. Um, I haven't really looked up how much uh, those watches go for because I'm not planning on selling it. Like I said, I bought it right out of flight training. This, this has some sentimental value to me, even though it's nothing special. It's a quartz movement chronograph that runs on a battery. Um, it's still ticking away. It, it looks like... Um, 
the battery might still have a little bit of some juice left, but I just want to open it up, take a look at it, and uh, see what we can see. Uh, you see it's a stainless steel wristband. It has gotten quite a bit of wear and scratch marks. I, I've used this watch a lot over the years. It's water resistant to 100 meters, at least it says. There's a lot of grime on the band. I definitely will throw the wristband in my ultrasonic cleaner and clean it up before I put it back on here. So let's do the first thing. We're going to take the wristband off. My wife has a watch repair kit a la AliExpress plastic. I'm actually the first one really unpacking some of those tools and taking them out. Um, it's better than nothing, I guess, if you just want to open a watch to uh, change the battery. It's probably good enough. Um, and this here, this, this uh, spring bar removal tool or spring bar tool um, is out of this kit. So let's take the spring bars out like so, one side. And um, oh yeah, there is definitely a lot of grime and sweat and tears and all that baked into this watch. It's been just sitting in my watch case for the last few years. Um, I always end up wearing the same cheaper watch here. Let me show you. It's on my wrist right now. It's a Casio, super scratched up. Um, it's solar wave scepter. Um, it, so it, it's, it's solar powered and it, it does the, the uh, radio signal to set the time. Uh, it can also give you different time zones. So when we are on a trip to Germany, I just push a couple of buttons and suddenly we're on Germany's time zone. It shows me day and date down there. And uh, you can also switch the, the digital down there to um, just showing the time. And this is so convenient. I mean, it is always perfect timekeeping. It's never running fast or slow. And it always shows me the date. And when I'm at work and I'm filling out uh, aircraft helicopter paperwork, I always need the correct date and the time. And uh, it's just always there. And so I always end up buying those, or actually this one here was a gift. Um, the same type of layout. It's, it's an analog um, hand setup and it has a digital down there to show me the date. And I really like that, but they get so beat up because I wear them all the time when I'm working under cars and doing home remodel. And the, the nicer watches, they end up staying in the watch case and not getting used all that much. But this one I really like and on weekends when we go somewhere, we go out, I want to put on a nice watch and this really looks nice even though it's not, not all that crazy expensive or anything. So now we have the wristband out of the way. I don't even have one of those case cushions yet. All the bits and pieces are in order. So I'm going to have a, a full watchmaker set up eventually. Um, I don't have a time grapher yet to test the accuracy of a manual or automatic watch, but that's all eventually going to come. We also don't have, I don't even have a loop yet to really take take a closer look. Only thing I have, oh here let me show you, is a, a clamp on magnifying glass that I usually have down in my shop to look at carburetor parts or engine parts. Oh, my, my camera light is a little uh, too, too pointy here. So, oh that's not good. Sorry guys, this is um, too much reflection of everything here. But I can, I can at least magnify a little bit and take a look at the markings. So let's move this out of the way. Let's flip it around. What does it say here? Stainless steel back. Uh, caliber OS80. OS80. Mm -hmm. Okay, 100 meter water resistant. Let's crack this open. Yeah, tool out of that $20 toolkit from Amazon. Has a 
hardened steel pins that fit into those little grooves here. Most watchmakers that I see on YouTube, they just use a big rubber ball. They are inflatable. They're specifically made for this. So you push the rubber ball against the back and then you have enough friction to actually open it. Or they have a, a tool that almost looks like a, a little press. You put the case in, it gets secured in like a type of a vise. And then um, they have the same two prong or three prong setup that fits here into the uh, case back. And then it has a little crank wheel up above and then it cranks the, uh, the back loose. We have to do it the handheld way here. So let's see here, the pins already fit. I hold onto the case tightly. Oh, there it comes. All right, case back's loose. I have gloves on, even though these are mechanics gloves and not the, the type that watchmakers wear. They usually just put finger cots on. A finger cot is just like a finger condom, more or less, to um, you know keep your fingerprints and your finger grease off of watch parts. Cheapo stamped stainless steel tweezers that came in this $20 kit from China. Oops. There we go. The back is off. Here's the, the stainless steel back. I don't know why there is this light colored section here in the middle. This almost looks like, is this some sort of, this is a sticker? I wonder why that is. It's also raised. This seems to be some sort of, hmm, I don't know. Around here we see a black rubber gasket that could probably use some replacement or maybe at least cleaning and um, and uh, then you can put a little bit of some silicone grease on there but I don't have any of those supplies and I really don't want to get the, the dirty bottle of silicone grease that I have in my garage. So I guess we're just going to leave this alone. And then looking at this here, it's, it's really not all that exciting. Um, you guys cannot see because magnification of my lens, which is a 55 millimeter lens. We're already as zoomed in as we can, but here on the side, I'll get my magnifying glass a little closer so you can see the edge. So you can see that I'm working on it. Um, so it's, it's saying on here, Japan. Miyota company OS 80 no jewels which is kind of disappointing jewels are usually the the bearing surfaces or the pivot points of, of little wheels and pinions and so I'm kind of sad that there are no jewels in here and there are tons of fingerprints all over the back of this movement it is really um, kind of sad to see this so whoever was in here and there might have been a family member involved that changed a battery for me, grabbed everything in here. So there are fingerprints everywhere. Fingerprints always leave behind whatever you have on your fingers, just the grease on your fingers or dirt or contamination. And uh, you definitely don't want to do that. That's why you either wear rubber gloves or finger cords and preferably the clean ones. All right, and now we're going to make sure that we didn't just drop some gravel in here. I have this little uh, Giotto blowing ball that I use for camera cleaning, camera equipment, lenses and stuff. They're pretty good. You don't need an air compressor when you're working on watches. So we can blow this off a little bit in case something fell in from the case back. And now we're going to use a tiny little screwdriver also from this Amazon toolkit. And we're going to take the battery out. There it is. All right. The battery is a SR927 battery. This here is Sony. That's good. So we're going to get a new one. Take the old one. Squeeze one out of the package here. Okay, there we go. And then um, now we're going to put this back in here. So new battery goes in here. Since I do have 
finger cuts gloves on i can i think i can push on this battery with my finger there's just this tiny little tiny little latch here on the side that holds the battery in place yeah sr927 sony in a japanese uh, miyota let's see i'm um, I am online, so let me do a screen capture real quick. Window capture. Okay, so we have tons of pictures of the of movements that have nothing to do with it. Here's manuals plus. Let's visit that page. This is a Astrovia. I guess different watch brands have used this movement over the years, and it gives me the setting manual description uh, how to change the battery display buttons uh, os80 <laughs> okay i guess they don't have an os80 movement in their catalog even though here is a, a manual web page that Universal Masterpiece Born in Japan, Made in Japan, Instruction Manual for Miyota Watch Movement Caliber Number OS80. Okay, I guess. Yeah, at least I, I learned what I need to learn about push buttons, but I already knew that. So let's turn the window capture off. Remove that here. Yes, there we go. So we're back at the watch. We just slapped a new battery in there. Um, let's clean the watch back a little bit. So I don't have any of the cleaning supplies that I um, ordered for my watchmaker career, but I do have lens cleaning solution, which is made by Zeiss for camera lenses. They are made out of metal and glass. Um, and so I'm assuming that if we give this a little bit of a scrub down with this lens cleaning solution and let it dry off, uh, we can also clean the gasket while it is in place here. Or maybe, maybe let's take the gasket off. And then uh, maybe we can... Uh, we don't want to pinch it. We don't want to damage it. Oh, here we go. Oh yeah, there is there's grime in the groove. Let's take the gasket out there, put it over there, put a little bit of lens cleaning solution on it. This is the closest to proper that I can find. None of the cleaners that I use in my garage are applicable for watch cleaning, for sure. But um, I, I just want to make sure we're not shoving gravel into the into the watch movement even though it's a quartz movement and a lot of those things are hidden from side so there are not that many mechanical parts in there i know that a quartz movement can also be lubricated that there are pivot points that need some lubrication but i will research that a little more make sure i get a miyota os80 instruction manual maybe i have to email them and ask them Maybe it's a uh, discontinued model. Yeah, let's let's do the same with the gasket itself. So I'm just going to put this on on my little microfiber rag. Give it a like I said, this lens cleaning solution should be um, gentle to all surfaces because it it's used on camera lenses that also have gaskets. They have glass. They have different types of metals, um, oftentimes aluminum and stainless. Brass is also, so watch and camera has probably a lot of parallels in the mechanical aspects and the electronic aspects even. You know, tiny little um, printed circuit boards, tiny little electronic components. So cleaned up the watch back and the gasket. We're going to reuse the gasket, of course. I don't have a replacement. Yeah, we could put some silicone on there. I just don't have any. 
I mean, not, not anything that I would want to use for. I have dielectric grease, which is silicone based. Um, all right, let's take my rag here one more time. Just go around the edge here. Okay. So I think it's seated correctly. Put that back on my movement here on my case. And then um, we're going to try to, I like to turn it backwards. So it's, it's a righty tidy, but I'm just turning it backwards so it can fall in place. Let's see if we can get this started somehow. Here we go. You don't want to cross thread this for sure. That's why most of those guys, they, I always see them use those rubber balls. They, they don't scratch up the back of the case. They don't damage anything if you slip off. I think that's tight enough. So now the problem is, all right, let's see. This has a start stop function and the hands, and let me get a pointer. This little hand is showing 1 20th of a second. This is supposed to be at noon right now at 12 o'clock. The second hand up here is also supposed to be at 12 o'clock and they can be aligned electronically. So um, the crown, the winding crown, which is not a winding crown. This, in this case, it's just an adjustment crown has two positions, one click and another click. So now we're at click two with this button, button A, we can move the second hand around when we hold it it will just do really quick one circle here and then we can do fine adjustment to bring it to 12 o'clock like this and then button b moves that 1 20th of a second and in normal timekeeping mode uh, this actually is the second hand so now we can push that run it close to 12 o'clock like there and then the last couple clicks we do by hand yep so now we have both of those hands pointing at 12 o'clock and then we push the crown back in now we can adjust the time see um there then with position one we can set if you spin it clockwise, you can set the alarm timer hand. This alarm timer hand, you just go um, to three o'clock, pull, this is here's button, th button C. If you pull that out, it, uh, this little red hand down there goes to the on position. That means that your alarm is set now. So I don't want alarm. And we're gonna park this at 12 o'clock too. And then push that back in. When you pull this out into position one and then spin it counterclockwise, you can change the date indication. Today is the 6th of December. So new battery, closed it back up. I guess now the case is closed. We can use a microfiber rag and polish the crystal a little bit, clean the crystal. Uh, this is a mineral crystal, completely flat. So there, there is no polishing here. I already got a little bit of some polishing and cleaning supplies here. This is polishing cloth for fine metals. So I could use this to maybe polish up the clasp on the wristband. And uh, where did the other thing go? I have another package here somewhere. Oh, it's right here. Pack of Polywatch, which is also a German product. It's made in... Neuried Germany by the Stark Innovation GmbH. Uh, this is to polish up um, acrylic crystals. So if you have a watch like I'm wearing and has tons of scratches on it, you can use poly watch to get some of those scratches out. But yeah, on, on real mineral or sapphire crystals, you can't do anything with that. You have to replace them. This one here is in pretty good shape. I'm not sure it might have gotten replaced at some point. We, we used to have a, a family friend who was a 
proper trained German trained watchmaker for decades and even after he retired he still would repair watches and maintain watches for all his family friends um, at home up into his 80s until he eventually passed away but um, yeah so that was my first exposure to uh, watchmaking and he would always take care of those kind of things but always been very interesting topic um, like I said I have been consuming a lot of content on YouTube about watchmaking and watch repair and revivals and that kind of stuff and especially the manual and the automatics are very interesting and like I said I'm already in the process of slowly accumulating watchmaker supplies and tools and once I have this all ready to go and I don't have to use my wife's Chinese watchmaker kit uh, we're going to dive into some other watches and not just change a battery. We're actually going to start tearing into an automatic watch. My dad's, uh, he, he left that watch to me or he left the watch to my family. Um, as a kid growing up, he always wore this watch. You're going to see it eventually. Uh, it's an automatic made in the late 60s, early 70s. Uh, it's still in good shape, but it just has a little bit of an issue of keeping proper time. I don't have a time grapher yet. And they are rather expensive, so $160, $170. And for a hobby that you are trying out, it's kind of a big step to buy tools like this if you then end up not using it. But eventually it's going to happen, and we're going to dig into some uh, more interesting watches than this one here. Um, I'll take my uh, wristband down to my garage where my ultrasonic cleaner lives. And uh, we'll throw that in there and get this all cleaned up before I put that back on there. But um, you, you, you get the drift, you know, how to put a wristband back on with a couple spring bars and a spring bar tool out of a Chinese watchmaker kit. Um, yeah, thanks guys for watching. So this is going to be the new adventure. This is now the additional hobby as if I don't already have enough hobbies, uh, you know, vintage cars, vintage motorcycles, but uh, watches. Even though the uh, initial step to get started is rather expensive, once you have all the tools and supplies ready to go, vintage watches especially, like 60s, 50s, 40s, there are lots of watches out there on eBay that are not functional, uh, but they are complete and they are waiting to be restored or uh, at least repaired. I'm very excited about this and I can't wait to tear into the first watch ever and uh, do a full disassembly cleaning and reassembly and then see if uh, we can actually accomplish this. Alrighty guys, hang in there. I will see you on the next one. Uh, please don't forget to give me a thumbs up if you can. Subscribe to the channel for more content. Alright, see you in the next one. Take care.